Hello and welcome back to our final part, part 3 of our CCNA how-to guide for route summarization. My name is Humphrey Chung for Router Guides. We're taking a look at this particular problem because it seems to give a lot of people some uh, indigestion when they're practicing this in their books or practice questions or stuff like that. So we see that we've been given a problem. It says summarize 172.16.10 through 172.16.63. That's a lot of networks to summarize. And one of the tricks that you'll see a lot of people do is, uh, well, uh, just take the just take the lowest network number. In our case, it's 172.16.10. And your mask is going to be, you just take a look at 10 and 63. And you can see that if we do a simple subtraction, 63 minus 10 is equal to 53. And we figure out where we fit in our in our bits here so 53 it's kind of too large for that 128 definitely will fit 53 but uh let's see if we go to the right 64 will also fit 53 uh 32 is a bit small so we're going to be we're going to be dealing with that bit there so because we were dealing with a slash 16 here we add two more bits this gives us a slash 18 and that's what people will answer and it seems logical but when we do this inside of a GNS3, you're going to see that it, your router is going to bomb out if you actually try to type this in. It's going to give you an error. Also, if you do it the traditional way, the kind of the long form way or the router gods way, you'll see that this answer is actually incorrect. So let's actually do it the long form way. So first of all, we need to list out the octet here. That's interesting. So we're dealing with this third octet. And so in decimal, that's 10. And, you know, I could type in 11, 12, 13, 14, but you, know, you really don't need to do that. What we can do is we can just pick a number in between, like 30, and then we'll pick the last number, 63. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is we can, we're going to convert this into binary. We're going to convert those three numbers into binary. And 10 in binary is going to be 1010, 1010. And, of course, we know that a byte has to have eight bits, so we're going to add four zeros in front, and we're going to split it up just to make it look pretty. The number 30 there, 30 in decimal, is going to be four ones and a zero in binary. One, two, three, four, and a zero. That's five numbers, so we're going to add three zeros in front of there, and we're going to split it up once again to make it look pretty. And then we're dealing with 63. 63 in decimal, six ones in binary. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's six. Add in two zeros. That's going to be eight bits. And then pop in our space there just to make it look pretty. All right. So now that everything's been converted into binary, we're going to look at everything that matches. So we see in our first column, everything matches. That's, that's great. Then we take a look at our second column. Everything matches as well. And then the third column is where everything falls apart. Everything's different. So we are dealing with two bits going from left to right. Two bits going from left to right. Now, if we add up these two bits, we have zero and zero there. Zero, zero. Well, zero plus zero, um, you know, zero times 128 is a zero. Zero times uh, 64, it's a zero. So this, that's a zero. So our beginning network is 172.16.0.0. .0. And our, our mask, our mask is a slash 18 because we started off with 8 here, 8 there, so that gives us 16, that's a horrible 8, so that gives us 16, 17, 18. So that slash 18 that most people get, that's correct, but it's 172.16.0 and not 172.16.10 that a lot of people put in. Now, to, to visualize this, to, to make sure it works, because this gets a lot of people, open up that GNS3 file that we popped up there. And you can see that this is a very simple three-router topology. We, we're going to have OSPF running everywhere. And on router 3, we're going to have a bunch of loopbacks with those IP addresses. Now, I didn't put in all 52 uh, I, subnets in there. I didn't feel like typing or copying, pasting that much. But I put in about 10 of those subnets. And then what we're going to have to do is this is going to be in a different area and we're going to send a summary, a range in OSPF terms, but this is a summary. And we're going to shoot that summary to router 2 to make that routing table go down. So show IP route on router 2 
is going to go from humongously big to somewhat manageable. So first of all, we just need to make sure that all of our IP addresses ping. So I'm just going to go on router one. I'm going to do my Hail Mary ping everything. And we have a ping from router three. And nothing from router two. So let me just check router two. Show, show IP interface brief. And we don't have an IP address on router two. So let's just fix that. IP address. 10.1.12.2 No shut. And if I run my ping again on router 1, I should get a ping back from router 2. Okay, now we have a good ping. Now if we take a look at router 3, you'll see that all my all my loopbacks are on router 3, so you can see all those loopbacks, 172.16 starts with .10, we go all the way up to .63. So I'm going to fire up OSPF. I'm just going to throw all of my networks into OSPF, area 0. I go over here to router 1, router OSPF 1. Now here's where i got to be careful because I've got two different areas here. I want area 0 to be pointed this way. And then area 1 is going to be pointed this way. So I can't use that network all zeros command. I have to be very specific in my networks. So if I do show IP interface brief, you'll see that my interface pointed towards router 3 is 10.1.13.1. So I'm going to pop that interface into OSPF directly. Make sure it's area 0. And then I'm going to throw the other interface, 10.1.12.1, into area 1. And finally, we're going to go over here to router 2. Router 2 is going to be easy. I'm just going to throw everything into OSPF, area 1. Pretty easy network command. And I'm going to debug IP routing, just so I can see routes coming in and out. Now, if I show IP route, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of routes. 172.16.10.15.16. Those are all the routes going to those loopback interfaces. And just to make sure I can ping them, 172.16.63.1, I can ping all of them. Life is good. So I want to shrink this down. I, I don't want to see all these routes on router 2. So what I'm going to do is go over here to router 1. If I go back into router OSPF1, we have a command called area range. Area range, that is a summary command. So we do area, and then what you're going to say is the area that it's coming from. Area that it's coming from, and it's coming from area 0. Area 0. And then we type in the range command. And here's where we type in our network. Now, if we had put in 172.16.10, the answer that people typically get for this particular question. If we go back to our diagram, or not our diagram, but our thing here. So normally people get this one, the incorrect answer, 172.16.10.0. And the reason they usually put this is they just look at the bottom, that lowest network, and they just automatically put in a 10. And here's what happens when you try to put that in. So 172.16.10.0, and you can see that we're asked for a mask. So 255.255.192.0. We hit enter, and it says inconsistent mask. It will not let us put that. So that is why, that's another reason why it's wrong. It's, the router's not going to let you pop that in because it's incorrect. So what we have to do is pop in the correct answer, which is 172.16.0.0255.255.192.0. We hit enter on that. We see over here on router 3, or router 2, you can see router 2, a lot of stuff deleted. It's killing all those specific routes, and it's going to add in that summary route. So if I show IP route here, we will see that all of those stupid little routes have been replaced with a 172.16.255.255.192. It's a slash 128. So if I show IP route 172.16.0.0, show IP route. There we go, show IP route. You see that we've got the correct entry. So that's going to be a slash 18. Okay, so that finishes up part three of our 
route summarization or how to guide for route summarization. So just remember that don't go on autopilot when you're doing these route summarization uh, questions, especially when you're going into CCNP or CCIE, because they're going to get you. They're going to they're going to make you assume that you know you take the easy route. You just take that dot ten. Oh, okay, that's going to be my network, and then you're going to get the question wrong because you didn't go through all the steps.